Hi, you're watching West Bloomfield 911. I'm your host, Tim Shepard, and on behalf of Chief Michael Patton and Deputy Chief Kurt Lawson and my brothers and sisters in blue, I'd like to welcome you all to the show. Joining me today is Patty Narosny. Patty is the owner and producer of the Hot Works Orchard Lake Fine Art Show. Alongside Patty on the show today is Kyle Huntoon, a local artist specializing in woodworkings. So welcome both of you to the show. I'm glad to have you here. Hello. Hello. And um, just so you know, my background is in art. So this topic is near and dear to my heart. So I'm very uh, glad that you're here today. Um, we're going to start with you, Patty, and talk about uh, a little bit about your background and um, about what's going on with this art show. Okay. So as far as um, Hot Works, what is Hot Works? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, well, I'm owner and producer of Hot Works, and we have the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show in West Bloomfield. And thank you, West Bloomfield Police, Chief Patton, Lieutenant Lawson, for always keeping the event safe. We love you guys. Well, thank you. And so I integrated this show. It's our 16th year, and it's my flagship show, and I'm from Detroit. And I used to work other um, events in Detroit, which are out of business, Detroit Festival of the Arts, Comerica Taste Fest. And there is an artist, Roy Schallenberg, which um, his paintings are in many homes in West Bloomfield. Okay. And he said, Patty, we need you. We need people like you. So he says, I have places for you to go. So we have a show in downtown Boca Raton okay. and Estero, Florida, which is uh, now in Fort Myers at JetBlue Park, which is where the Boston Red Sox play. Okay. And those shows are also voted top 100 art shows in the nation along with the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show, which has voted top 100 10 years in a row. So I personally know about five to 7,000 of the art fair artists, and I've gone to over 1,000 shows, and we bring many great artists to the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show in West Bloomfield, who you don't see at any other Michigan shows, because it's a hot work show. The artists know that I'm gonna do a great job for them with getting the word out and bringing art show patrons who are there to purchase art and not stumble upon the show. And they also know um, that I'm gonna keep it a high quality juried show where all work is original and personally handmade by the artist in the show. Well, that's wonderful. And you know, working in um, West Bloomfield, I am familiar with the show and everyone here loves it, and including our department. So, you know, we're glad it's here and it's great for the community. Um, as far as art yourself, are you an artist? How did you get into uh, working with art shows? Well, no, I'm not an artist. Okay. I am a perfect example of a kid who grow, grew up and my art was taken away from me. Okay. And um, uh, Let me interrupt you, through schools or through what do you mean? Through schools and through my father. Okay. Uh, we were very creative students. I used to sell my macrame hangers at a nice. fish shop okay. when I was 10, 11 very years nice. old. Okay. And my dad said, be an attorney, be a lawyer. And I have a corporate finance degree from Wayne State University. Okay. And now I have an art background, but when I started the shows, again, I was working for other events. But who was a big instrumental um, uh, help with me? My mentor was Ann Cuffler. Okay. Uh, from Ariana Gallery in Royal Oak, and she had her gallery for 26 years. Okay. And she was behind Hot Works for the first about 15 years, and um, she really directed me. We went to many shows uh, together uh, in Chicago, in uh, Boston, Baltimore, and she says, no, Patty, yes, Patty, or this is what's quality. And she so really directed lot, me, yeah. and you have to have a good eye, but when you see it, so many times you, you begin to learn. So sure. now I do have an art background, okay, yes. Okay, wonderful. Uh -huh. um, and as far as art, I mean, I think it's all in the eye of the beholder, right? So right. you like what you like, and I think that that just goes about in life. If you see something you like, I mean, we all get trained some in some ways about you know aesthetics and composition and things like that, but I think what it boils down to is what you like. So I think when it comes to an art show, um, having things that the community likes is important. So do you feel that the, uh, the patrons enjoy the people that you bring to the shows? Oh, absolutely. <coughs> Actually, our slogan is see art, love art, buy art. And um, our philosophy is, is there has to be something for everyone. Okay. Especially someone like me who wasn't an art collector. I started collecting uh, pieces and actually buying handmade pieces 
at $25, $50 and up. Okay. And now I'm an art collector and I have a nice art collection, but it's important for us, we're a, we're a street show, okay. we're not a museum show, okay. and it's important to have something for everyone. In addition to there are many collector pieces out there, Kyle's an example where he has, his work is commissioned, so he makes his pieces based on uh, the preference of the patron. Okay, nice. Um, uh, so, so yeah, it's important for people to be able to far, forward something, okay. start buying pieces. I bought my nephew uh, from Kevin Lang in the show. He has uh, rice pieces that are paintings. They were $20 each, I got them framed, but my nephew, who is 20 years old, took his posters out of his bedroom and now he has original art. Very nice. So those are examples of how we need to uh, start getting more and more people out there to start uh, appreciating personal and handmade items, buying it on a smaller level, and then you'll start appreciating, and then you're gonna sell, oh, there's that $3,000 piece, now I can afford it, sure. and that's what they're talking about, and that's what I like. Yeah, I agree. Uh -huh. um, in terms of um, hot works and the art shows, I know you said that you're down in Florida a lot. Yes. You have one show here in Michigan. Yes. And that's the show coming up. Right. What is the, um, how do I phrase this? What was the determining factor of having the show in West Bloomfield? Um, is it because, well, originally the show was held at Orchard Lake St. Mary's, okay. and my family was involved with them for 60 years. Okay. And uh, so again, I was involved with many Detroit events, and they said, where, where should we do a show? And I said, Orchard Lake St. Mary's. And Tom Walsh, um, at that time, after about eight years, um, he was the community development person in West Bloomfield, and they always had a booth at the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show. Okay. And he said, Patty, how do we get this show to West Bloomfield? And I said, Tom, you just asked. So nice. from that point on, we moved the show to West Bloomfield. We love working with West Bloomfield. Uh, Steve Kaplan and <coughs> Debbie Binder and the township are great people. Um, uh, and, and there's a lot of permits that we have to do, but it's okay. I understand the paperwork. Sure. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a part of life. But we make it happen, <coughs> and um, we have the whole community involved. Here's a great example of the community involvement with West Bloomfield today. Murph, Marvin uh, Murphy is from Florida. Uh, he's on the front cover of West Bloomfield today. And he's a perfect example of an artist who doesn't do any other Michigan shows, who comes to the Hot Works Orchard like Fine Art Show. Very so this impressive. is a, thank you West Bloomfield today. We went into all the homes, so everybody should know about the show. Absolutely, and there's an article as well about Hot, wor hot Works Inside. Yes, as a matter okay. of fact, right next to your page, <laughs> There's, uh, with your article, Oh my see article. your okay. handsome face right there. There you right go, there, thank you very right? much. <laughs> mm -hmm. And all about Officer Shepard, and then here's our ad. And then uh, we do have a two-page spread. That's awesome. And so we're going to get into some details about the art show, so I want people to understand when it is, where it's at, how sure. much it costs. So can you start out with telling me when is the art show? Yes, it's July 28 and 29 in the heart of West Bloomfield, and last year we were at the high school. We're back on Powers and Daily where we were for eight years previously. Okay. And why that was decided uh, is a vote. Okay. And artists were quite shocked that the show director, this is an example of, sh of how I pay special attention and I care about the artists. Yes, I wanna ask them, do they prefer which location? So it was voted Powers and Daily because it's more in the heart of West Bloomfield, Orchard Lake Boulevard is complete. It looks beautiful. It looks great, yeah. And there's plenty of restaurants right there. And yeah. West Bloomfield has great restaurants. Uh, Pickles and Rye, the deli place there, Chris Belly's. They just have great restaurants. So it's nice that the patrons will have restaurants within the show too. Okay, so there is food mm -hmm. available, okay. It, but <clears throat> it's nice that they can actually leave and come sure. back too. Yeah, that's great. So it'll be on, um, and there's plenty of parking behind Beaumont Medical Center which is between 14 and 15 mile, and it's at 6900 Orchard Lake Road. Okay. And if they go all the way in the back of the parking lot, um, as if they're leaving the parking lot, okay. they're gonna drive up right to the show, nice. especially the handicapped people. They go right to the way back behind Beaumont Medical Center, and thanks Beaumont for allowing us to use your parking lot for patron parking for this. Sure. And, and they're gonna go right up to Daly Road, which is the entrance of the show. It's Perfect. on uh, Powers and Daily. Let me ask you, is there a cost to get into the show? Yes, admission is $5, <clears throat> 13 and under are free, okay. and that helps to pay for the cost of producing the event. 
and it supports our uh, 501c3 nonprofit, Institute for the Arts and Education. I am okay. president of that. Okay. And the focus of that nonprofit is visual arts, which means we keep the buy, sell, import out of our jury show, which is a national problem, uh, community enrichment, okay. cultural diversity, and fostering art education among youth. Well, that's wonderful. So you're giving back through the profits to help yes. society and citizens in general, so that's yes. wonderful. Yes. So we're going to take a break here, but I don't want to leave uh, Kyle out because we're going to be speaking about Kyle's art right. and um, his background here shortly. So we're going to take a short break and we'll return shortly with more West Bloomfield 911. You're watching West Bloomfield 911 on Civic Center TV, a service of the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission. For more information or to watch episodes on demand, visit civiccentertv.com slash WB911. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. The West Bloomfield Police Foundation raises money to help those who protect and serve the community. Whether it's emotional or financial support, the foundation provides a helping hand to officers, their families, and those in the community. For more information on the West Bloomfield Police Foundation, contact Kurt Lawson at 248-975-8900 or visit wbpolicefoundation.org. Welcome back to West Bloomfield 911. I'm your host, Tim Shepard. Again, I'm here today with uh, Patty Narosny, and uh, she is with the uh, Hot Works and the... Uh, uh, Orchard Lake Fine Arts Show. And of course, I'm with this other gentleman sitting here, which is Kyle Huntoon. Mm -hmm. And Kyle's a local artist, and we're going to talk a little bit about his work. And so first of all, Kyle, welcome to the show, of Thanks. course. Yeah, and um, can you tell me a little bit, first of all, about what's sitting here on the table with me? OK, so, um, so what you're seeing on the table is a couple of candlesticks that I've turned, um, as well as a postcard that okay. just kind of shows a few pieces of my work. But the candlesticks are kind of a, a good example of my aesthetic. I okay. kind of. I like to touch back on um, what a lot of people know as uh, mid-century modernism, um, which actually was um, started in Michigan. You okay. know, it started uh, that kind of that whole aesthetic started at Cranbrook with the Eames and Saarinen and some people that kind of just met, and it was this perfect amalgamation of of artists at the time. Really inspired me to to get into what I do. Um, I started. Um, by collecting pieces of, of mid-century modern furniture, and then I just realized that it would be great to combine um, what is actually my family history of craftsmanship okay. into something that I really love, which is collecting furniture, um, and then coupled with um, a background in civil engineering, I went to U of M for civil engineering. Cool, um, all of that kind of went together, okay. and out came these designs. Okay. Um, so the candlesticks are um, an example of that aesthetic. I um, I feature a lot of turned work um, okay. in my pieces, legs of my furniture. I turn on the lathe. Um, a lot of people are familiar with you know, lathe turned objects like spindles on staircases sure. and legs on tables. Um, <clears throat> these candlesticks kind of show off that mid-century aesthetic where there's a lot of curves. Um, I really, uh, I just started doing them recently because um, the legs on my furniture, they're very, very straightforward. Um, design and I wanted to get into some sexier I don't know like you know kind of kind of things and there are a lot of candlesticks from that era um, that are really cool and they kind of push the border of, of what's pleasing to the eye sure um, so I just got on my lathe you know about a month ago and just started making these candlesticks and some of them are a little teeny guys and these are kind of like the bigger ones but I think it gives people an opportunity to buy in like Patty had said to um, to art, you know, to be able to afford something. Maybe they want to support the artist. Maybe they want to support the show. Maybe they, they just like the idea of having something that's unique in their home. Each one of these um, candlesticks is one of a kind. Okay. You know, I, I, I don't do another one the same. I never can, you okay. know, I never will. Um, a lot of them that I've made are different aesthetics. I've kind of paired them as like almost like couples, like, yeah. you know, they got like the, um, <clears throat> but um, you could just buy a set of them if you liked them and you didn't want to put candles in them. Sure. Um, and there are some of them, I think I have like, some of them all the way down to like $35. Okay. Um, but you know, you'll find pieces all the way down to that price point maybe okay. at the show, obviously with me and probably some other artists. 
Um, but I, you know, custom furniture that I make, it can go up into the thousands. And you know, that's how I support myself is through having that like range of, of okay. price points. And um, I typically um, like to make furniture because it's like big risk, big reward. Sure. But these smaller items are kind of you know fun to just like do in an afternoon, yeah. and it's like wow, that really happened really fast. I just made something that's nice. like beautiful, and maybe someone else would enjoy. So, in terms of the work you do. And, and I'm talking about furniture specifically. Um, how does how do you get ideas? How does someone does someone come to you? Is this pre-made things? What's the process? So I've I have both um, pieces that I would call like pieces in my collection. Okay. Um, and then I also take on a lot of uh, custom commissions. So okay. it's both of those things are fun. Um, it's fun to interact with with clients. Um, you know, I meet them at art fairs. I'm hoping to meet some new clients at the Orchard Lake. Um, fine art show. Okay. Um, you know, I I build these pieces um, based on aesthetic that I initially enjoy, okay. um, which started in that mid-century modernism kind of era. Um, uh, I went to woodworking school uh, in Maine after I left my engineering job, so that I could could really beef up my my knowledge of craft. Um, I had been doing some furniture making prior, but it was. I wouldn't say cobbled together, but I didn't have all of the, the knowledge that I needed to really make it fine art. Well, let me ask you this. Um, so you went to school to be a civil engineer, mm -hmm. and then you left, and now is this your full-time thing? This is my full-time my full -time gig. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I was a civil engineer for about five years. I, I have my professional engineering okay. license. Nice. Um, it's a cool little stamp that I have on my desk. Yeah. <laughs> and a, and a plaque. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it was, uh, there are, People, the, the places that people get to in their life, I never necessarily thought that I would completely flip. And sure. people that know me from my past are like, oh, like, of course, or like, how did, uh, how, why, you right. know? Um, but it just kind of was calling me, like, the whole time I was doing engineering work, it was kind of obvious that okay. I was daydreaming about making furniture. Yeah. And so I finally left in uh, mid-2012. I had been living out in Washington State. Okay. Um, and I moved back to Michigan. I'm from Jackson. So I moved back to Jackson for a couple months. And then I went to a fine woodworking school in Maine um, for a small, short program. It was three months. But I just absorbed as much information as I could. And then I ended up going back for a workshop to design and build a stool that now it's my full-time job. I've been asked to um, teach a course at a woodworking school in Indiana this fall. Nice. Um, that yeah. I kind of all came out of the fact that um, at the beginning of 2016, I was um, asked to, um, you know, I was awarded, I don't know, I, I participated in um, a furniture design competition show on HGTV called Ellen's Design Challenge. Okay. It was the second season, that's Ellen DeGeneres, um, actually, so um, yeah, I competed against nine other uh, furniture designers, uh, some designer makers. Yeah. I would consider myself more of a maker than a designer, but you know, okay. I, after being on that show, it really kind of pushed me into the design uh, half of it, like fully. But I competed against nine other people um, for a hundred thousand um, dollars. I was the only person at in this competition that did not go to art school, uh, okay. didn't have an advanced degree from an art school, like. RISD, Pratt, SCAD, okay. um, and I, I got fourth place, but I felt really, right. really good yeah. about that because, like, it was a, it was a heck of a, a heck of an experience. You it's know? very impressive. Um, I mean, yeah. to, just to be involved with that and right. to be, and there's a lot of people that are, um, you know, skilled people that do a lot of art that you do, mm -hmm. um, and probably not really as, as many as you would think because it's pretty. Um, a lot of things are pre-made these days and mm -hmm. the quality isn't there the same. So to be able to get on that program is, is very impressive. Yeah, yeah and, and to, <clears throat> to talk about quality, like I think it's, I think that's a differentiator. You know, yeah. you, you can buy anything. You can buy yeah. a piece of furniture sure. if you want. Um, I see a lot of furniture out in the garbage. Okay. And that's because the, the furniture that people buy, it's, it's, it's throwaway stuff, okay. you know. It's, and and it, the, the kind of thing that you get from uh, in our fair, like the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show, is you get the education. You get to educate okay. uh, people about how things are made. You know, um, whether that's a ceramic artist saying, "Okay, you, you're both getting design and you're getting function out of my work potentially," sure. or myself as a furniture maker, um, I like to show people how the work is made. Um, I do so via uh, joinery that that is a 
prominent feature on my furniture. Okay. Um, I like to say I pulled the joinery to the outside of the furniture. What's um, the joinery? I'm not you sure. You know, what that so means. dovetail. That's what okay. people are most familiar with. Okay. Um, I feature a, a finger joint, which is like a modernized dovetail. It's more geometrically symmetrical. Okay. It's like squares, okay. uh, but it looks like a dovetail. And a heck of a lot of people come into my booth at art fairs or other places, and they're like, "Oh, beautiful dovetails!" And you know what? They they can recognize that. And and I'm I'm not going to sit there and correct people yeah, on on the, the tiny differentiator, but it's important that they are seeing how things are made. Um, they're recognizing quality, and I think that pretty much every consumer of goods knows if they're looking at a dresser. People pull a drawer out, they look at the side and like, oh, dovetails. Yeah. They don't know what, they're, what they do. They have no idea what a dovetail okay. does. But they know that it, it signifies something. It okay. signifies someone touched this, someone made this. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's not a factory. It's not made out of particle board. You know, it's solid wood yeah. and it's gonna last. And, well, that's, and that's the craftsmanship important. part of it. Yeah. I think that, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things these days are utilitarian based, right? So mm -hmm. it's all about, you know, putting my clothes in there. But when you look at your work, I mean, it's beautiful. So to me, it's, it's and I think to you as well, obviously, it's artwork. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, that the people can see the quality and the beauty in your work. And um, it doesn't matter what your uh, medium is, right? It doesn't matter if it's a canvas. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's clay or artwork. It's still art. So uh, it's beautiful. So again, um, but let's speak about uh, how did you hear about or get involved with the art fair or the oh, art show? Yeah. So um, I have a pretty large extended family. Um, through, you know, I mentioned earlier, craftsmanship is something that's been in my family. I'm I'm a fourth generation woodworker. Um, mm -hmm. My great great grandfather was a barn builder in Jackson, um, Michigan, um, and then my great grandfather grandfather both did made furniture and were. Um, they, they ended up doing a lot of cabinetry to, to pay the bills. Sure. I've committed to making furniture fully because nice. it's important to me. Um, but I, I met, uh, I actually met one of my relatives through that connection. Uh, my dad's cousin, uh, Duane, lives in Orchard Lake. And she called me up um, kind of right when I got into this in 2013 and said, hey, Kyle, I've got your great-grandfather's lathe. Um, do you want it? And I said, of course I want it. And she said, it's eight feet long. And I was thinking, there's no way this thing is eight feet long. Right. And so I drove out with a friend who had a small truck, um, and it was eight feet long. Yeah. Um, and we, we got it to fit into this tiny truck. But she also gave me um, a tool chest. That was my great-grandfather's. had a bunch of cool stuff in it, like hand planes and everything. Um, and that was kind of my connection to her and Orchard Lake. And ever since, she's kind of said, oh, you got to do the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show. you got to do the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show. And I'm like, I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, and in previous years, I had committed like financially to these sh uh, national shows that were far away. And honestly, they're great shows right here at home, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'm kind of focusing locally on, on art fairs, um, shows, um, well, Orchard Lake being one of few ar art shows that I'm doing this year at all, okay. you know. And it's important to get... Um, get more exposure locally. I mean, how are people going to know that I exist if I don't come to them? Some of them well, are the like question. looking things up online, okay. you know, Googling like art furniture maker in Detroit. People want to see it and touch mm -hmm. it, and this is a great opportunity for them to do that. Well, it's a great segue into the question I have for you is how can people get a hold of you? Do you have a website? Is there some way? What's the best way people can get a hold of you? I have a website. Um, it's www, like every other website, yeah. um, dot huntandnoyer.com. Hunt and Neuer is the name of my business. That's H-U-N-T-A-N-D-N-O-Y-E-R. Okay. Um, it's the amalgamation of my, my parents' last names, Huntoon, which is my father's last name and my last name and Denoyer, which is my mom's maiden name, and it means of the walnut tree, so I nice. found it to be very um, fitting. Yeah. But I have a website. You can see examples of my work on there. You can contact me through the website. My business is very e easily Googleable. Okay. My name and photo is plastered all over the internet okay. as well. Um, so, um, yeah, you know, if, if you type in Detroit Furniture Maker, I believe I'm on maybe the first page of Google for that. Wonderful. Um, so, um, but you know that's a good way to like take a look at the work if you want to see it, and I think you should. Um, sure. You know I think people should come to the art fair and, and see see pieces like side tables, see stools and sit on them, and like see the size of things and how they might fit in their home. And Wonderful. it's just really important to be able to like touch. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And Patty, <clears throat> excuse me. 
We're going to be wrapping up here in a second, but I wanted to get a couple things in that we wanted to talk about. Uh, so as far as uh, the, the juror program and the art uh, for the youth, can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, as part of our commitment to bring art education into the community, about 13 years ago, I started a program, the Youth Art Competition, within our shows uh, as a way to encourage students to create their original and personally handmade art. It's $3 for the students to enter because we want serious entries only, and their parents get two VIP passes to attend the event, so it brings families to the art show and exposes them to art. Uh, most importantly, uh, besides the $250 of Youth Art Awards, uh, the students are exposed to the entrepreneurship opportunity of doing art shows for a living. Okay. So at the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show, Kyle's an example of one of the artists, one of the great artists who will be at the show where the people can actually meet the artist at the show. But the students are also encouraged to speak with any of the artists in the show um, and ask them what inspires them and why they uh, do the art shows for a living um, as a way because our, the, the our, uh, average artist in the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show is over 62 years old. And I saw that way back. And it is a concern nationally with our art shows. Uh, they're being loaded up with junk. Not only that, but our artists are dying. Okay. So um, we need to, and with our programs being cut in schools, not in West Bloomfield though, but it is a national issue. Okay. I'm an example of a kid who had art taken away from me many years ago. We need young students to start getting into our art shows. They can earn a living and be their own entrepreneur their boss and do something they love for a living, most importantly. And um, I always uh, explain in our presentation, which is Sunday, 3 p.m., uh, everyone's invited, is I read a Wall Street Journal article a few years back, and it said that 70% of professionals, including lawyers, doctors, hate their jobs, <laughs> and 70% of artists love their jobs. Oh, so wonderful. if they can do something that they love for a living, I agree. that's the best thing I that agree. you can do in life. I want to thank you both for coming out today. Um, so everyone, please come to the art show and uh, see Kyle's work and uh, say hello to Patty. And um, I'd like to thank you for joining us on this episode of West Bloomfield 911. You can keep up with the police department by liking us on Facebook and following us on Twitter and Instagram. You can also sign up for Nixle.com and CrimeMapping.com for the most up-to-date information from the police department. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and goodbye.